Hello and welcome to another Conversations with Dr. Westman. Today we're going to be talking about cholesterol ratios, or more specifically your blood lipid panel cholesterol ratios. Last week we spoke about the understanding, you know, how to understand your cholesterol test. Today everything's going to be about cholesterol ratios and what they should be. We also have a bonus for you today, which is brought to you by Dr. Westman, and it is his new guide, Eight Ways a Keto Diet Improves Heart Health. We'll tell you a little bit more about this in today's uh, later on in today's episode, and we'll also put a link for you in the description. So last week, um, you taught us how to interpret blood lipid panels. This week, we're going to learn about the different ratios, why this is important. So to understand your cholesterol profile, ratios, ratios are used to interpret risk. What ratios are important to look at with regards to your lipid panel? Yeah, well, first of all, let's just uh, go over what a ratio is. A ratio is the uh, division of one number by another. So one half is a ratio or it's a fraction. So a ratio is a fraction. So uh, it's a way to adjust for things. So let's say um, really BMI is a ratio. It's the weight divided by your height well, and the height is squared, so it, it's more than just a simple ratio. But, but so BMI, we use ratios all the time. Now, in cholesterol, a ratio is really important because, oh, well, going back to BMI, your height and weight mean different things if you're at a different weight so, uh, and a different height, clearly. So if you're tall and you have a high weight, your BMI is not going to be abnormal, abnormally high, reflective of, of a high fat mass. So someone who's very short with the same weight is going to have more likelihood of having obesity with a high BMI. So a BMI adjusts your weight for your height. Now in cholesterol, there's a similar need for that because you've heard of good cholesterol and you've heard of bad cholesterol. So how do you account for both in one number? Well, that's a ratio. So for years, people have been talking about the total cholesterol or the one number, or the LDL, the one number, the triglyceride, the one number, the HDL, the one number. Well, how do you account for HDL, the good cholesterol, when that's high, and your bad cholesterol, the total, the LDL, the triglyceride, how do you account for that, adjust for it? Well, it's a ratio. So if you have a lot of good cholesterol is going to outweigh or, or counteract or, or adjust for the bad cholesterol. So simple idea is let's take what we think the bad cholesterol is and divide it by, or put it in the denominator of the fraction by the HDL. So all of the cholesterol ratios have HDL, the good guy, or the, good ratio, the good cholesterol, in the denominator or the bottom of that fraction or the ratio to account for the fact that a lot of people have high, quote, bad cholesterol, but they have really good, good cholesterol. And so you don't have to worry about it. So that's what the ratio for cholesterol is, is it adjusts the good and the bad together in the same number. Now that's assuming that there is a, you know, a good and a bad cholesterol ratio because you don't prescribe to that good and bad um, scenario, but that's kind of what we've been led to believe that there's a good and a bad cholesterol, HDL being the good one, LDL being the, the bad one, L standing for lousy or, you know, bad cholesterol, but um, you don't prescribe to, to that um, understanding. Is that, am I, am I correct? Well, it's too simple, but it's, it doesn't account for all of the different types of LDLs and HDLs and, and the triglyceride is kind of the new bad actor that most doctors don't really talk about. So, uh, but, the, but even so the, the total class, so if you think about it in the old way of thinking, the way I was taught, the total or the LDL on the top number of this fraction, and then the HDL on the bottom number of this fraction. So it's called the total cholesterol HDL ratio or the LDL HDL ratio. These numbers do better in terms of predicting heart disease and strokes than just one of those numbers by themselves. So you can actually 
have risk, and it's not perfect. It, it's not a perfect predictor, but you can account for someone's increased risk by a high total to HDL ratio or a high LDL to HDL ratio. And in the new paradigm of metabolic syndrome, we don't use total and LDL on the top anymore. We use triglyceride on the top divided by HDL. So HDL, the good, the good guy, and yes, there's a good good and a, and a bad good. <laughs> it's more nuanced than that. But HDL being in the bottom of that fraction is really important for you to understand that your, your risk, it's not just that total or the LDL or the triglyceride number. You want to use that ratio if you're going to use these numbers uh, and HDLs in the denominator. And, you know, it does give you some information. It's not perfect by any means, but a lot of doctors still use these ratios and, and guidelines have them. And, and that's why it's important for you to understand that. And, and the main message I get across to my patients is that that HDL needs to be in the equation. It needs to be in that ratio. Now, Eric, sorry to put you on the spot, um, but let's, first of all, before I put you on the spot, um, what you're saying is the new way of looking at or trying to predict as best you can using a lipid panel. We know that there are better ways to look at cardiovascular risk, but the best way to look at cardiovascular risk within a lipid panel is to look at your HD, your triglyceride to HDL ratio. Is that correct? That's right. And that's the new understanding. It's called metabolic syndrome. It also includes other things beyond the lipid. But yes, it's the new way, or what I say is just a, another way, and it's actually better, is to look at the triglyceride HDL and the ratio it, it together gives you a lot of information. It's not perfect, but it gives you information. And now um, for the folks that are watching, um, what is preferable is to have as high as possible HDL number and to have as low a, as possible triglyceride number. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. So the triglyceride, I think of it as uh, it's um, fats that are on VLDLs in the blood. You're going to see the triglyceride and the VLDL tracked together because triglycerides are are carried on the VLDLs and triglycerides, LDLs, and total cholesterol kind of are the things together in the blood that are associated with the atherosclerosis. However, high HDLs are also protective. And if you look very carefully on the, the lab tests that you get, there's a, a normal range for these things and then they quote guidelines and you'll see an HDL over um, depends if you're male or female, but if uh, uh, HDL over 60 or so in U.S. units is actually protective. And it'll say on there, protective. And yet most doctors don't account for that HDL in their decision making because most guidelines aren't updated with the latest information using that. They often will focus just on the old way of looking at it. And you have to have a way to account for that HDL in your, your risk prediction. Now, what about the triglyceride? Yeah, so triglyceride is one of the, the bad guys, bad actors in general. So you wanna keep triglyceride as low as you can. I mean, in, in our studies, if you get the triglyceride to HDL, now if you think of a ratio, it's, it's one number over another, right? So one divided by two is, is 50 or 0.5. One divided by one is a ratio of one. So if you can get a triglyceride to HDL ratio of one or 1 1.5, one and a half, we think that's very, uh, very protective. That doesn't uh, give you risk for insulin resistance or diabetes. So you want to get your triglyceride HDL ratio as low as you can. One to one is kind of like the, the, um, uh, the great thing we try to get to, which means you want to lower the triglyceride, that top number, and raise the HDL, good cholesterol, on the bottom number in order to get that ratio adjusted. You know, if you just write down on a piece of paper triglyceride and then a line and then HDL and just think about that, that's the fraction, that's the ratio. You, you will lower the number if you lower the top or you raise the bottom of the fraction. I mean, that's just how fractions work. Now, Eric, um, before we go, um, you cover all of this. 
um, and a lot more um, because it seems like it's such a complicated topic, but you've simplified everything into a very, very clear and concise new course called End Your Cholesterol Confusion, where you go through everything from understanding lipid panels to understanding different types of tests that actually do predict uh, atherosclerosis um, and cardiovascular risk and hypertension. You go through absolutely everything. Um, in that course, uh, that end your cholesterol confusion course. Um, what can people expect to learn in that course? Well, you know, this is the most common question I get today in my clinical practice, especially if someone's um, seeing a doctor who's in the old way of thinking. So I want people to understand what cholesterol is, that actually cholesterol is essential in your body. And, and it's these other particles that carry cholesterol around that are very different than cholesterol. That fundamental knowledge will, will have you kind of smell a rat or your hackles will go up when someone just talks about cholesterol because it's, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about these lipoprotein particles. So you gotta get that in your mind to, as really separate. And then we go way beyond just the lipid panel. Today, doctors in my area obsessed about the, this one number on a, on a blood test when there are all these other factors that are much more important and we get into that. So we wanna give practical advice. And I find these days that's my role is to, to get rid of the confusion for people because uh, a lot of people are watching online uh, and it's very confusing. A lot of doctors are still in the old way of thinking. And you know, I've been thinking about this a while because I wrote a book called Cholesterol Clarity some years ago, and I knew now for a long time, I've been thinking about these other things, not just LDL that are associated and, and things you can do, including lifestyle change to reduce your risk. Now, uh, before we go, um, someone that takes the course, will they understand how to, you know, how to assess their own risk, how to speak to their doctor, um, and most importantly, how to determine whether they should be going on cholesterol lowering medication or not. Absolutely. So I'm bringing in the practical information you need to know, like briefing you uh, to know the science in order to then help you make your own decision with your doctor's involvement. And now I'll, I'll be your doctor for the moment, showing you where to go to make these decisions. Today, it's all about shared decision-making. And, and if you, you know, feel bullied, by a doctor or a dietitian or someone, or you know, even family member, this course is for you because you're gonna be able to think on your feet and I'm trying to make it just as simple as possible. It's a complicated set of information, but I can bring it down to a simple level. That's kind of been my, my, my signature way of going about things to make it understandable to the patient that's sitting in front of me. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Eric. That's all we have time for today. Be sure to watch next week's episode where we're going to be speaking about atherosclerosis. But before you leave, just a reminder that we have that special bonus for you, uh, which is the truth about keto and heart health brought to you by Dr. Westman. We will be a link for you in the description. And if you are worried about cardiovascular risk, this guide is definitely for you. And if you'd like to learn more about our upcoming courses, which is End Your Cholesterol Confusion, coming out on the 15th of November, 2021, you can visit us at adaptyourlifeacademy.com. Eric, thank you so much for uh, meeting with us today. And we look forward to catching up with you on another good episode next week. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye.